how the books are. The books are written terribly. Laced her writing with cocaine. Didn't you know that human rights are human rights? Hi, welcome back. It has come, the time of the year in which I get to wear my little evil hat uh, and talk about all the books that I fucking hated this year. I'm actually going to talk about two categories, the disappointments, like the two stars, the books that I really wanted to like, and then uh, the books that made me enraged. Because like, I'm pretty fair with my three and two stars. If I'm not liking a book, I usually tend to give it two stars because one stars are for the books that are inherently fucking bad for one reason or another. They either have something that makes me rage or such poor grammar and writing that I cannot uh, finish the book, like I cannot, um, or something that is, I think is inherently either like wrong with the book. Like if I were to read, I think Credence, uh, which has a relationship between a, an uncle and his niece, something like that, I would probably give it one star. I'm going to split this video in two categories. The first category is the disappointments. Disappointed! I'm also uh, adding the note that I don't have any of these books physically, because I, I knew, I think deep in my heart, I knew. Um, so I bought the ebook for all of them, except for one of them for which I was truly influenced and I, it was one of my most hated book of the year and uh, never again. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you when the books will appear. In chronological order, the disappointments, I started the year with the series. I don't know why, what compelled me, because I knew I would probably not like the series uh, and it's the To All The Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. I watch the first season of the To All The Boys TV show and I was like, that's pretty cool and good and like age appropriate for teenagers. I wonder how the books are. The books are written terribly. The writing is dry, very naive, very juvenile. And the characters in the third book, which is the one that I hated the most, were not 180 degrees and I'm like, yep, I'm going to go that way, even though I was supposed to go that way, because that way is more stupid. <laughs> Jenny Han puppets her characters like truly as if they were puppets. And she's like, well, I want the plot to go that way. So the characters must do this thing, even though it's not in their nature to do so. So especially in the third book, it was so frustrating. Um, if you read the book, you know why. So uh, the first two books were the disappointments. The third book is borderline a one star, like a book I hated because like it was such a big no. Then in the disappointments, I have The Seed by the Gargoyles by Lynn Lark. I love monster romances. I love the craft of writing a monster romance because I think it's so liberating. It's such no rules genre. You can do whatever you want to fulfill whatever you desire. Um, and I decided to start the year with this monster romance and tell me why. This is supposed to be like a polyamory relationship between three gargoyles and our protagonist. The problem is the only gargoyle that I liked, the plot conveniently forgets about and he's never in a scene except for like the smutty ones uh, and he rarely talks or do anything in those uh, and the other gargoyles and the protagonists are so fucking stupid they share one brain cell and they pass it around for all the scenes but whenever you're in their point of view they never get it they, they don't have it it was such a frustrating read because I was like, it, it has such good potential because the, the smuttier scene, the hotter scenes were written very good. And I don't know why the plot was so stupid and the characters were so stupid and my, the only character that I liked is not there. Guess why I'm frustrated and why this was a disappointment. I wanted to enjoy this so much. Then I got into the habit of listening to like silly little audiobooks before I go to bed to like lull me to sleep and I found out that truly unknown and a little trashy romances are my thing even though I don't like him. Uh, so this is a list. I started with 
wishful thinking by Evangeline Anderson. It's a like magical realism book in which there are like parents fairy, like the fairly odd parents style. But again, why are like these little trashy romances always about stupid people? Because every turn in this book was like so stupid. I think the author gets her point across being very judgy. Like at one point, uh, the protagonist, through like uh, wicked magic, discovers that one of her bosses likes to wear lingerie, like women's lingerie, and she's like, "Oh my god, ew!" And another one is a furry, and she's like, "Ew!" As if it's like the worst thing in the world, and let people do what they want in the comfort of their homes. They did not want to share that news. That was pretty cool. It was also like the grandma of the protagonist was a menace like a menace and not a fun one so yeah yeah a lot of these books i have read for a challenge like a reading challenge so, so i have vlogs for them uh, they're going to pop up like on the screen uh when i talk about them because the next one is the never king by nikki Sankara. god uh this is a dark romance and it's kind of like a retelling of peter pan in which there's this girl who thinks she's going crazy because her mother has gone crazy and there's like a line of women in her family going crazy at the age of, I think, 17 uh, because they start hallucinating going to Neverland with Peter Pan and at 17 she goes to Neverland with Peter Pan who is now a bad boy and is the captain of like a gang and in the smut scenes, like the, the spicier scenes, uh, he he wants to be called peter pan not peter just Pe peter pan can you imagine uh having the mental image of the disney movie of peter pan because if you call him peter pan and not peter you know um and having to read smut about him in which the protagonist is 17 and he is immortal yeah uncomfortable uncomfortable it was also like laughably bad like the writing was laughably bad um, so, you know, at least I laughed. Another one of the silly little audiobooks that I uh, read in, like, to lull me to sleep is The Friend Zone by Chris and Callahan. I did not know this was, like, in a series, but they are, like, uh, not a, a true series. They're, like, companion novels. Uh, again, uh, The Friend Zone is just, like, fine, but in a way that made me annoyed because the main love interest is, was just, like, uh, you know, the broody, almost unbearable character that, like, in real life would get you nowhere because it would dump you at the first turn. And I did not, did not like that at all, at all, like at all. Next book has to have an explanation. So the next book is Daisy Hates by Jessa Hastings. Uh, I read, uh, not in a, in a blog, just like on my own, the first three books in the Magnolia Parks universe. So there's the Magnolia Parks book one, then Daisy Hates book one, then Magnolia Parks book two, and then Daisy Hates book two. Um, I read the first three. I think Jessa Hastings writes, like, laced her writing with cocaine. Because there's no way. This is a, this is a series about toxic romances. But I think uh, I liked the third book about Magnolia Parks, because this is about like rich kids, Gossip Girl-esque in the UK. It's really interesting. The writing is something else, let me tell you. Uh, but I liked the progression of the Magnolia Parks books better because the characters do grow and they go to therapy and they behave better <laughs> as the series progresses. Daisy Hates is the only character that is really stagnant. She's also not a girl's girl. She is, she's slut shames. She's really, really mean. She would spit in your face just because you're like poor and miserable. Uh, I did not like Dizzy Hates at all. And that's why I give it two stars. Even though like Magnolia Parks and Magnolia Parks The Long Way Home, I think I gave three and four stars. Uh, I don't want to read the second Dizzy Hates book, but I think I will because she is the sister of Julian, which is one of my favorite characters. I love Julian like a lot. And I think it's a, like a sheer sentiment. Another silly little audiobook. <laughs> this time is Truth or Beard. This one was just stupid and I did not like it at all. The, the main guy was another brute, another one of those annoying 
fucking characters. I could not stand him. Like brooding for no reason at all, rude for no reason at all. And I'm like, I'm sick of it. I'm sick of you brooding characters. Why are you brooding? You're not a character in Six of Crows, okay? You cannot brood. This one is the true, like the true disappointment of this year because I really, really wanted to like it. Lauren Lust by uh, Carla Nicole. This is a book about vampires. I wanted to like this so much. It's a Milner romance. It was supposed to be like luscious and also a little bit funny, but with a deep plot and fantasy-esque elements and just like, it was just too good. Um, the world was not developed, the relationship, uh, the, the thing is, <laughs> the main love interest for the protagonist who is a vampire he's italian he descends from a, an italian a strong italian ancestry um and everything that carla nicole's wrote about italy and italian families is not historically accurate like at all but not even like accurate for a google search i felt kind of offended because you know i am italian i i live here i was born and raised here and every little detail that she put into her book about italy was not correct and i'm like this is a level of of wrongness that i could not believe like who told you that who told you that the, the names and the surnames were completely out of pocket and the places and the things that they do in those places like I was so disappointed. Okay, okay. I have to I have to explain this book. I read the fine print by Lauren Usher. Um I mm, I wanted to like this book so much because the first half was like fine, like three star territory, but this two we, we are in the modern world, but uh we don't have Disneyland, we are like dream dreamland something like the dreamland yeah billionaire series so um the romance is between one of the employees of this dreamland park and one of the brothers that inherits this park um so he has to uh like remodernize all the the rides before the year ends i think or he will get nothing um and his brothers have like similar tasks to do so he kind of begrudgingly allies with this employee, this girl who was like sunshine and rainbows. Um, the thing is, he learns that human lives have like meaning and purpose. And like people who are poor are not just like insects only because this girl tells him. And I'm like, sir, did you know that human rights are human rights? <laughs> and not just like, rich people have human rights and then poor people have like whatever they can get i was like astonished also the sex scenes were like the <laughs> so fucking cringy they were so cringy i'm sorry i'm sorry that kind of smart is not my kind of smart i'm i i just it was it was not for me okay it was not bad it was not for me <laughs> the next books are all like very very popular books that i fell into a little bit of a rabbit hole um and i read them because they were really super popular like on tiktok and yada yada uh the first one is divine rivals by uh rebecca ross divine rivals suffers from being i think mismarketed to me to me it was told to me by the internet girlies that this has like beautiful writing, like a light fantasy plot with a war and gods and like magical typewriters. And I was like, okay, sure. Uh, and also they were like, yeah, it has enemies to lovers. And I was like, okay, I like, I like enemies to lovers. I like me some enemies to lovers. The writing is not good. The writing is very juvenile. Rebecca Ross writes like I wrote in high school when I wanted to make all my sentences really pretty and elaborate, but I, knew none of the words to do so. Um, so I just put big words into the sentences and hope for the best. And I think it resonates more so in English because English is a very simple language. Italian is not. Italian is very complex uh, and difficult and harrowing. Um, so me reading it in English 
And then reading the Italian translation, they were both really bad, I think, very juvenile. And I think a stronger editor, like a stricter editor, would have helped the book tremendously. There was no world building at all. Even if it's a light fantasy, you need world building. Look at House Moving Castle. It has wonderful world building. Um, also, the magical typewriters, they're used two or three times. They're really not relevant to the plot. Uh, but also, the love story does not make sense. It has so many plot holes, this book, if you really truly think about it. And it makes me so mad because... Uh, you know, I know it's a case of it's it's me and not you because if you truly expect nothing you love this book but I had some expectations and they were not met. Next super popular book that I read I actually do have a copy. Wait it's not the book that I was telling you about it's another book. It's better than the movies Failing Painter. I was ready to love this book so much because I love movies. Um, this book is not really truly about movies at all. It's about soundtracks of movies. No things of the cover, like the little things that the characters do on the cover ever happen in the book. This was a pile of cliches. If you take all the things that you love from romantic comedies that you love from the 90s and early 2000s and like dilute it down to the bare bones, it's this book. I've already read all the scenes in this book, like scene by scene, chapter by chapter in other books word by word. It's not plagiarism, it's just like using cliches in the most cliche way possible. Um, it's when you use tropes uh, in a way that everybody has used before, so they become cliches. I liked kind of the main love interest, he was funny, um, the protagonist was insufferable. Uh, she was just like me at her age, but she kind of did not grow enough to think about retribution, so I and it was just not, not. Next book is Fourth Wing. I have a reading blog in which I read this book. I can attest that this book is addicting. It's true. I read it in like two days and I think the pacing is perfect. The thing is, this is a romance fantasy, like a romance with fantasy aspects. It wants to be something more. Um, and it also, I think, fails at being both a romance and a fantasy. The fantasy aspects are truly not well described. The world is nonsensical, plot holes everywhere in the world building. The, dra the dragon aspect, oh my god, it's taken like literally word for word from the Omegaverse. It's just like, oh my god, I am back in 2012 reading fan fiction about people I did not know. It also fails up in a romance because I think it's one of those cringy romances from 2015 that I truly did, cannot like. Uh, and they're not for me. Like the brooding, again, uh, dark hair man with shadow powers that you've seen a hundred different times. Um, I think this book really resonated with people that have started reading like DC or maybe during the pandemic so they don't have as much of like a reservoir of past book reads. I read a lot of fantasy, it's one of my favorite genres. This, this was just not good. And the last popular book that I read is Mile High by uh, Liz Tom Ford. This is the first book in a series and apparently everybody hates the first book and love the second and third book. So I can't, I, again, I feel kind of validated. Uh, Mile High was just, I think it was fine, but again, why are, why are there so many characters in romance books that are so fucking stupid? Like, the main love interest was just kind of a little bit too misogynistic for my liking. And I was like, um, I don't like you. I don't like you enough to continue on. I may read the second book out of curiosity, but like, right now, probably not. Probably not. The last two star read uh, that I read <laughs> this year is A Flame in the Night by Morgan Dante. This is a novella. This one is special because I think I was really truly disappointed but in a way that I think that this author will be great in the future. This is a case of I think not having an editor. This is a, I think is an indie novella like romance uh, between a vampire and two runaways from the sex industry in the dapper era. So they 
do adult movies and do these like boudoir soirees of photography and it's a polyamory romance. Um, I think this suffers from being a novella. Writing novellas and short stories is an art. If you build a story that needs to be longer, it needs to be longer. This could have been like a 300 pages book. Uh, it could not have been a truly good novella. I, I also think the writing really juvenile um, in a way that I almost can see as a fan fiction in which nobody is, is there to criticize you. Of course, they do not pay money uh, for those characters. So if I have to hear the word decadent in a phrase uh, more than two times in a hundred pages book, uh, I think maybe you should cut something out. Uh, but I think it has the potential like Morgan Dante, I think, has the potential to be a fantastic writer. We enter into the worst books category because they're not a lot. I'm very sparse with my one stars. Uh, the first one is My Days at the Morisaki Library by Satoshi Yukisawa. I, the rage that I felt reading this book. You know those little Japanese books that are supposed to be like very simple writing very light writing and they're very profound uh, i read a ton of those this is not one of them this is a book about fucking nothing you you're supposed to follow a character that uh goes to work in a little little library uh after having like a midlife crisis like a 30 year old um and you spend only 30 pages in the library let us sink in 30 pages out of all the books and it's more about the character's mother uh, and her life and about an old man at the library and i could not care less about these characters they're so again they're not stupid they're boring which is worse this is one of those books that tries to be profound while saying nothing and i could not condone that i'm sorry yeah, I have a vlog in which I, again, another silly little audiobook, but this time it's the worst thing that I've ever read. I think, I think it is. It is Surviving Year One by Cora Wilde. I think another indie romance in which the protagonist uh, gets enrolled into an academy to be a Green Reaper and she's the only human and everybody bullies her and it's a bully harem romance. The main love interest i think of the harem gets introduced by being homophobic and he never says why because he's an angel and he's incredibly homophobic towards the gay best friend of the protagonist never apologizes uh there's also a demon that says that incest is okay because he's a demon and he's not a human with morals and stuff yeah i was flabbergasted could not finish that book it was just incredibly bad also badly written like very badly written and i'm like yeah this gets zero stars go on to the next one um another incredibly bad book but this time a little bit more bearable this is from blood and ash by jla jennifer l almentrop i've read jennifer l almentrop before uh, I read White Hot Kiss, I think her trilogy quartet with the aliens. Uh, they were fun, they were stupid, they were trashy, but I love them. Uh, this one is just, just bad. It's badly written, badly paced. I fucking hated the protagonist. She's, she's just so incredibly stupid. I hated the romance. I hated everything that came out of the male interest's mouth everything the world building is nonsensical again plot holes everywhere and i don't know why jla knows how to write a trashy entertaining romance this was not it this was just plain bad it was torturous to read i could not go on and i had to i was just the easiest one star of my life but i was just exhausted this is the book that I wanted to complain about, that I was influenced to buy in physical form <laughs> when in Rome by Sarah Adams. Listen to me, subtlety is dead, apparently, uh, and the reader is actually the idiot, because the reader, of course, cannot gather information that are 
plainly there in the text. You have to repeat everything that the character thinks and says to you multiple times. Because how, how else are you going to understand that the characters are in love at page five? This is just like, I think, textbook, bad writing. It's not grammatically okay because it was riddled with, I think, grammatical errors and like, uh, temporum errors, which are like how you conjugate a verb in past, present, you know, future. Um, there were many mistakes. You are in the point of view of the characters. So you know what they are thinking and what they are saying. And then they repeat it to you as they were talking to you, the reader. And again, and again, and again, and again. And I just wanted to stab myself in the eyes again and again and again. The last book. <laughs> it's another one of those silly little audio books, but this time I knew the author. It's a Mariana Zapata books. Um, it's Rhythm Corda Malakin. It's a sports romance. Um, this one I could not, I could not. Read like The Wall of Winnipeg and me, that one was fine, it was just fine. This one is filled to the brim with slut shaming, misogyny, uh, borderline, you know, bigotry, and just like fat phobia everywhere. And I was like, how did this get published? How did this get published? It was so bad, like the slut shames. The slut shaming was so bad and the bigotry and it was never, you know, discussed or, you know, nobody apologizes for it. It's perpetrated by the main characters who never apologize. So I'm like, why is it there? Why? Because the characters never change. There's no character growth to show me that they were terrible people and now are like decent people. We're all the disappointed, like the worst books of my 2023. It's a wrap, baby. I am done. I read a lot of really good books this year, but a lot of them were disappointments. And I think um, a new resolution I have for next year is I I know myself because I knew for all of these books, aside for like one or two, uh, that they were going to be really, really bad. I don't want to read bad books anymore, aside from like, you know, fun fake reading or like for like a challenge. I don't want to do that anymore because it's like I have limited time in my ear and I just want to read good books. Um, I also don't want to get influenced anymore, uh, especially into buying the physical copies of books that I'm on the fence about. Example, When in Rome. If you're still here, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I know this was a long video and I was like filled today. <laughs> to the frame with a it ends here if you want to connect with me i have some socials down below uh if you could like please comment something like subscribe you know the youtube thing and i see you in the next video which will come shortly i have a vlog that i'm filming um and i'll see you when i see you goodbye Mwah.